Welcome to this series of educational videos dedicated to sonic intrusiveness. Intrusive sounds emerge from a background in such a way that certain mental and physical reactions are elicited. The activation of certain brain regions and networks, body reactions like changes in heartbeat, skin electricity, muscular rigidity, and possibly subtle deterioration of movement qualities. This does not mean that intrusive sounds are always a negative experience. Almost every kind of music has intrusive elements and we probably like the sensation created by this intrusiveness. Intrusiveness becomes a problem when it is experienced in a passive way being exposed to an annoying blinker sound when driving. Receiving the sound of a ringtone too rich and loud. Being in an hospital while medical equipment sends out urgent alerts. Being in a park where a scooter passes by. In this series, we'll explore several timbral and spectral dimensions which allow a sound to emerge from a background. And we'll see how this can be modulated in order to create a more or less intrusive event. This first video is dedicated to a general dimension of intrusiveness, the relation between background and foreground. Several fields of study have investigated the mechanisms in our auditory system which allow for this phenomenon to occur. Since the 60s, the fascinating field of auditory attention research investigated how the emergence of sound from a background elicits drastic changes in brain structures connected with arousal and vigilance. We are constantly listening to the sound of the world around us and any change in it can awaken our attention. In the 90s, the field of auditory scene analysis, defined by Albert Bregman in his seminal book, analyzed how our auditory system is able to deconstruct complex auditory scenes into individual elements. More recently, another important field of research took inspiration from the visual domain to investigate auditory salience and understand why not every element emerging from a background captures our attention in the same way. For this first video, I will give three simple examples of different levels of intrusiveness. Let's start from an example of a sound emerging from the background in a way which we could define almost as non-intrusive. This is one of my favorite sounds. It is a simple montage of recordings that I made many years ago in the hills near where I live. It is the sound of a very soft breeze moving the leaves and branches of a tree close to the microphone while many other similar trees are in the background. In this recording, sonic events still emerge with a very, very low level of intrusiveness. This is connected to three elements. A, the timbral profile of the emergent sound has very little contrast with the background. B, there is only a small difference in amplitude between foreground and background. C, the temporal profile of the emergent sound is extremely slow, with a very long attack and a very long release. If this slowness were even more accentuated, the sound would probably pass under the radar of our salience networks.
The following example is a recording of a highly intrusive sound, in which the emergent sound has a great timbral contrast with the background. It is a small motorbike in a traffic situation with mostly cars. There is an important difference in amplitude and a fast attack release profile. To finish, an extreme example of sonic intrusiveness, the sudden shifting of a six cylinders competition car engine from an idle state to a high RPM state before the start of a race. In this case, timbral contrast amplitude and temporal morphologies are so extreme that the sound could exit the realm of simple intrusiveness and be considered a startling sound. In the following videos, we will start to analyze one by one the timbral dimensions around which the contrast between foreground and background is created.